طب اعتبروها استراحه يعني واحد يسال استراحه شرحك واضح دكتور والله طيب I know that you are tired and so do I so the second lecture is about surgery for inflammatory bowel diseases and I hope this is going to be shorter I will give an introduction about inflammatory bowel diseases the data that are, uh, that are important to surgeons or surgery. I will not go into the details of inflammatory bowel diseases. And I'm sure that you have taken this in your gastroenterology course. So inflammatory bowel diseases are chronic inflammatory diseases. Most patients suffer from intermittent relapses, so they are coming to us with on and off course. The first type is the ulcerative colitis, as you can see in these photos. Ulcerative colitis is a diffuse inflammation of colonic mucosa. Always affects the rectum and extends proximally. In continuity to stop at one point and may involve the whole colon, which we call pancolitis. And in this case, it will include the cecum. Pathologically, it is characterized by the presence of crypt abscesses. So you have to remember these words. It's a diffuse inflammation. Affects the colon. And the, only the mucosa of the colon. Of course, that's the uh, classical teaching. There may be some exceptions beyond your level. In continuity, starting from the rectum upward. All these are important when we differentiate it from Crohn's. And all these will affect the presentation and will affect the management. So please remember mucosa, colon, diffuse, continuity. So it can be only proctitis, can be left side colitis, can be pan colitis. And these are different colonoscopic views showing different degrees of inflammation and compare these with the colonoscopic views that are the normal colonoscopic views that I have presented earlier. This represents the most severe type and it is showing that there is severe edema to the degree that it forms polyp-like lesions. We call them zoodopolyps. And by the way, the zoodopolyp is not the pathology. The zoodopolyp is the normal mucosa that managed to get edematous and enlarge. So there are hemorrhages, ulcers. All these white stuffs are ulcers. You see how the mucosa is uh, uh, reddish. And the vascular markings that we used to see in the normal colon are lost. And if you touch these with the colonoscope, they will bleed or it will bleed. And these are the zoodopolyps I've talked about. And this shows the cutoff between a normal and abnormal colon. You see the clear mucosa with the vascularity. And look here at the ulcers and loss of the vascularity and the petechial hemorrhages, etc. 
and this represents the hemorrhages and the nodularity. Of course, this may progress to uh, zoodopolyps. هذا نورمال يعني الموسيقى بس ما عرفت هلا احنا طالعين من جوا لبرا يعني عدينا شايفين هلا كيف الميوكوزا هاز تشينج So what about Crohn's? And appreciate the differences compared to ulcerative. It affects any part of the GIT. It is commonest in the Alucica region. Instead of the continuity in ulcerative, there are skip lesions. Instead of the mucosa, we have a transmural inflammation. And accordingly, because of this transmural inflammation, it, affect, it can cause strictures, fistulas with adjacent structures, and pathologically, it is characterized by the granuloma formation, although it is not always present in all the cases. So remember, instead of the colon in ulcerative, we have the whole GIT. Although the commonest is alucecal. Instead of continuity, we have skip lesions. Instead of a mucosa, we have a transmural. And accordingly, the patient may present with strictures and fistulas. It affects the alucecal region in 45% of cases, the alia region in 30%, and the colon in 25%. So see the difference between a colitis, starting here with continuity, and Crohn's colitis that can affect any part, of course, with the small intestine as well. And these are colonoscopic views from Crohn's disease. You can see the ulcers. They look like the aftas ulcers, loss of the vascularity, deep ulcers and fissures, deep ulcers, and zoodopolyps. Of course, you cannot depend on the colonoscopy to differentiate between the two types. It's the pathologist who will decide the Differential, the, the proper diagnosis. Unless, of course, you have a patient with a small intestinal involvement and colonic involvement, so most likely the colonic involvement are Crohn's. Again, a patient with the Crohn's. And this is an example of a fistula between the small intestine and the skin. We call it enterocutaneous fistula in a patient with the Crohn's. And this is an example of the columns in Crohn's disease. You can see all these are ulcers and fissures, and you can see the wall is thick. This is a clearer, showing the thick wall and the stricture. Again, you can see the difference between normality and the narrow lumen with thick wall. And this is the terminal allium severely inflamed compared to the normal small intestine forming a mass. 
and this is the cecum. That's why it simulates appendicitis because it shares the same site and inflammation and irritation of the peritoneum. Again, this is the area of the terminal allium severely inflamed. And this is shows this shows the fistula site with a nearby structure and the narrow lumen and the deep fissure and the thick wall. All what you see here is not a lumen. This is a deep fissure. Actually, there is no lumen. If you bring the two edges together, the bowel is closed. And this is a normal ascending colon and an inflamed descending colon. And you can see the inflammation had reached the surface because it is a transmural inflammation. And this is Iberium enema showing how the inflammatory process has caused straightening of the colon, sarsail pipe, it's a new pipe like, and all these are ulcers. And this is the terminal allium showing narrowing. Compare this with the normal small bowel. And this is a colonic Crohn's showing a stricture there. And these some extra intestinal manifestations like uh, what do you call it? The nodosum, eye lesions, scleritis, uveitis, erythema nodosum. The start of bioderma gangrenosum, clear picture of bioderma gangrenosum, kylosing spondylitis like lesions. These are the extra intestinal manifestations. Sometimes the eye changes may cause opacity of the cornea. These are the aphthous ulcers. Sometimes in cases of colon involvement, colitis, we cannot differentiate the Crohn's from ulcerative even with the pathology. That's why they have introduced this term intermediate colitis. Some people consider it as a third entity. Some people consider it as one of them, but still the pathology did not settle the diagnosis. So what's the treatment? It's medical, both in ulcerative, steroids, sulfasalazine, immunosuppression, or in Crohn's, Sulfasalazine, steroids, azathioprine, cyclosporin, metronidazole, and monoclonal antibodies against tumor necrosis factor, the infliximab. And some more monoclonal antibodies are being tried. So the basic treatment of inflammatory bowel diseases is medical, which means that surgery is having indications. In cases of ulcerative colitis, one of the indications is the acute complications, like real perforation or impending perforation, the toxic megacolon, or the uncontrolled hemorrhage. Another indication, which is less clear, is intractability. And for intractability, the surgeon, the gastroenterologist, and the patient should sit down and discuss, did we reach a stage of intractability or not? Is it the symptoms are not controlled? Or the, the quality of life the patient is having is poor? Or we started to have side effects of the drugs? Or the patient is non-compliant? or he's having a growth failure because he started his treatment early. And a third indication is to prevent cancer. <coughs> so these are the three groups of indications in cases of ulcerative colitis. What about the cancer risk? We said that 
when ulcerative colitis is pancolitis, after 10 years of the disease, we started to have an annual risk of cancer. The annual risk is low. It may not exceed 1% per year. Now, a lot of people are misled by this because they say 1% is low. But you have to remember that this disease usually starts early in life. So imagine somebody is having the disease at the age of 20 and he's having pancolitis. And after 10 years, there is an annual incidence of 1% every year. So perhaps by the age of 50, he would have a 20-30% incidence of colorectal cancer. So it is significant. And because it is underestimated, most of our patients with colorectal cancer on top of ulcerative colitis have never been having the chance to discuss the issue of the cancer with the physicians. They even don't know that there is an incidence of colorectal cancer. Of course, we are talking about the group of pancolitis after something like 10 years of the disease. So what can you do for those patients with pancolitis after 10 years? Either you do surgery or you submit them to extensive surveillance by colonoscopy and biopsy. And the biopsies should be looking for any severe dysplasia or adenomas, polyps. And if so, they should be advised to have prophylactic surgery. But you have to inform them that this surveillance and biopsies will not prevent the development of colorectal cancer. These are attempts to pick the problem before it happens or early after it happens. So what's the surgery? Remember the first slide, this is a disease of the rectum and the colon. So the treatment is total proctocolectomy. In the past, the patient used to have a permanent alleostomy. Nowadays, we bring the small intestine, make a pouch of it, hook it to the anal canal, and simulating a new rectum. We call it allial pouch and pouch anal anastomosis in order to keep the continence. Of course, the patient will not be as normal, but definitely he will not be like a patient with pancolitis, and at the same time he will keep his continence. The pouch surgery is usually successful in more than 80% of the cases. Sometimes we do a temporary stoma, temporary alleostomy. And our definition of success is the patient can feel the desire, he can defer the defecation. The frequency is reasonable, something like six times in 24 hours, and no soiling. Of course, the surgery is a big one done in the pelvis. So there is a possibility of sexual dysfunction. And one of the problems that we may face is pouchitis. You should not do it for Crohn's. And you should know why. You should not do it for obvious rectal cancer because the, v the field in the pelvis is already a malignant field. And you should not do it if you are not sure of the diagnosis. What about Crohn's disease? 
the philosophy is a treatment uh, of uh, treatment is different. We said that Crohn's disease can affect the whole GIT. So you cannot cure it by surgery because you cannot remove the whole GIT. That's why the surgery is reserved for complications and the type of surgery is limited to the complication. So you are going to excise that piece of the bowel involved with the pathology. Indications for surgery. The absolute one free perforation, which is rare. Massive hemorrhage, which is rare. Possible appendicitis that was in the past. Nowadays, you should diagnose it with the CT scans. And of course, when carcinoma is suspected. The incidence of cancer is there. But it is much less than ulcerative. And as we mentioned, you cannot do prophylactic surgery for it. So your role is to intervene if there is any suspicion of carcinoma. Of course, the optional, in, the, uh, optional indications are uh, uh, many. They include recurrent or chronic obstruction, malabsorption, abscesses, toxic megacolon, retarded growth, fistulas, and anal disease. These are optional, judged by the surgeon. And of course, restrictions. As I said, no major surgery in terms of extensive resection. You limit your surgery to the pathology, small intestine resection and anastomosis. Sometimes you can even do stricturoplasty, suspected appendicitis, appendectomy, fulminating colitis, colectomy, colonic stricture, resection of the stricture, etc. The fistula, you remove that part of the bowel involved with the fistula. So as abscess, the Crohn's disease nowadays perhaps is the commonest cause of psoas abscess. In the past, it used to be tuberculosis. You drain it and you resect that piece of the colon or small intestine involved with the psoas abscess. These are examples of a fistula to the urinary bladder, a fistula to the vagina, an abdominal wall abscess just before it opens like a fistula that I have shown you. This is a urinary bladder and that is the stool pouring in it. And these are examples of anal disease in Crohn's disease and these are quite difficult diseases to treat and we will touch on that in the lecture about anal diseases. Crohn's disease is worse than ulcerative. The cumulative risk, the cumulative risk of death is doubled compared to the counterparts. 70% will need surgery during their lifetime. The morbidity is significant. 50% will have recurrence within 10 years. 25% will have another surgery. And cancer, as I have mentioned, it is reported, but the incidence is low. And you cannot do profile access for it. Only if you suspect it on the basis of fistulas or strictures, you tackle it surgically. Any question? Any? Yes. Uh, إحنا حكينا بالالسريتيف كولايتس لأنه في عنا ريسك إنه البيشنت يصير عنده كانسر بنعمل سيرفيلنس كولونوسكوبي كل كم سنة بنعملها؟ Actually, it is supposed to be extensive. No more than, uh, no less than once every year. However, you may hear different opinions, especially from the gastroenterologists. 
so accept the differences in opinion. We as surgeons believe that the risk is significant and the uh, surveillance should be more extensive. Uh, but uh, uh, the gastroenterologists in general are having a lower profile uh, for that. But the what we should agree upon is patients with pancolitis after 10 years, they should not be left without some sort of follow up. تمام شكرا دكتور. أهلا. Any questions? لا دكتور شكرا. بل كيف في حدا عنده سؤال يعني ما؟ إحنا ساعة ونص زي ما اتفقنا معكم هي طلعت بالضبط ساعة. ونص. No questions. آه صح يا يا خبر يا. الله يعطيك العافية دكتور الله يعافيك قديش الحضور في النتيجة؟ 180 دكتور الله يا 175 كويس ما في أسئلة؟ لا خلينا مبدئيا مبدئيا نتفق الثلاثاء القادم على الساعة ثلاث ونص أعطيكم محاضرة تمام دكتور بتواصل معك الموعد إذا في تغيير أنا بتواصل معكم لأن الاثنين مناوب لا أدري إذا الثلاثة ظهر أي شغل يعني بشمل لذلك الوقت لا سمح الله بس بشكل عام إن شاء الله هيك اتفاقنا تمام دكتور إن شاء الله دكتور أبارك فيك في أسئلة أبدا؟ الله يعطيك العافية دكتور يلا وفقكم الله السلام عليكم